Francium will certainly remain my final challenge when it comes to having worked with all of the first 92 elements. In this case, having just a spectron demonstrating the presence of element 87, Francium, would be enough for me. But even that I haven't been able to achieve yet. So here are my attempts so far and some additional information, such as the answer to the question whether francium or cesium is more reactive. Firstly, what's so unique about francium? It's absolutely highly radioactive. To put its radioactivity into context, there are dubinium isotopes that are more long-lived than the most stable francium isotope. Despite its high radioactivity, it's still naturally occurring. It appears in two decay chain the uranium-actinium series and the neptunium series. The classical neptunium decay chain no longer exists as we know from the video primordial radionuclei. It has completely decayed by now. But there is an incredibly absurd special case where in a mineral a U238 atom captures a neutron and via an N2N reaction becomes uranium-237 which then decays into neptunium-237. This seems to have been proven by isolating actinium-225 from a pitch blender mineral from Congo and from monazite from Brazil. I'll link the paper here but I digress, here are the decay chains. In the uranium-actinium series, starting with the weapon grade U-235, francium-233 appears. However, actinium-227 decays only 1.38% of the time through an alpha decay into francium. And how do we get uranium-235? Well, we have 97% pure uranium-235 as U308 uranium oxide. 97% refers not to the total weight, but to the U235 content compared to other uranium isotopes like U234, U236, and 238. Having measured this using a Geely detector for 2.2 hours, we see no francium-223. To be honest, seeing the spectrum like this, I wouldn't detect it anyways. But here I've zoomed in and marked where the lines should be. Francium-223 is a beta minus emitter and has gamma lines at 50 kilo electron volts with a 34% probability of occurrence. And even in the X-ray range, where things usually get very interesting and absolutely chaotic, there's nothing visible. Even the 79.6 kilo electron volts with an occurrence probability of 8.7% is nowhere to be seen. The first proper gamma line in my opinion, and not in the x-ray range, is at 234.75 kilo electron volts with a 3% occurrence probability. Yet we still see nothing. I've considered that the Geely might have a low counting efficiency and even then we should be able to detect these three lines and the heights should correlate with the probabilities, which is not the case. So why don't we see any francium? This sample was produced through chemical processing and enrichment in 1970, meaning all other elements were removed. Now our decay chain has basically been reset and the uranium needs to decay completely again to produce all the elements in the decay chain for us. The uranium-235 thorium-231 equilibrium takes 10 times the half-life of thorium-231 to establish. 25.52 hours times 10, yeah that's been enough time since the last 50 years. But the subsequent thorium productinium equilibrium depends on the 32,000 year long half-life of productinium. And yeah, that's far from being in equilibrium right now. Sure, thorium continuously decay into productinium and despite the decay of thorium, the quantity remains constant due to the preceding uranium-thorium equilibrium. But it doesn't really matter too much that the first productinium atom forms, we can only measure productinium when it decays and with such a long half-life it basically doesn't. Hence the statement the radioactive equilibrium depends on the half-life of the daughter nucleus. We can only detect it when it actually decays. So this doesn't mean that there really is nothing from the other nucleus following in the decay chain, but they are in such absurdly small quantities that we couldn't detect them. Okay, so let's take something without chemical preparation and stuff, like a uranium mineral. In that case, it's metatorbonite. And unfortunately, even here we can't see anything. If we zoom in, we might think that, like before, we can see a peak at 234 kilo electron volt. But if that's truly from francium, we should be able to detect the other lines according to their occurrence probability. 
which is not the case. Okay, to be honest, it only makes sense that we can't detect anything. Let's say we have 4 grams of pure uranium in this mineral. Of this, 0.7% is uranium-235. That's 0 0.028 grams at a specific activity of around about 80,000 becquerels per gram, this equates to 2,240 becquerels of uranium-235 activity. In radioactive equilibrium, all members of the decay chain have the same activity, except for francium, as it is formed only in 1.38% of all actinium-227 decays, meaning you round up to have a activity of 31 becquerel of francium activity, with an occurrence probability of the 50 kilo electron volt gamma lines of 34%, we come down to 11 gamma photons per second, and the detector has an efficiency of 1%. That's around 0.1 counts per second, and this will definitely be lost in the background. Okay, let's complete this whole thing and include the Neptunium series. For this, I have a tiny amount of neptunyl triflate and it's measured for half an hour. As we see, we can't see anything. Zooming in, I have to point out that a different region of interest was chosen because in the neptunium decay chain, it's not longer the francium-223 isotope, but rather the 221 isotope. This is an alpha emitter with gamma lines at 218, 100 and 410 kilo electron volts. Well, it only makes sense that we couldn't see anything as the uranium 233 with a half-life of 159,200 years practically blocks the formation of francium 221. If the decay chain were in equilibrium, it would be even more noticeable because francium 221 is a major component of the decay chain, whereas the francium 223 is only a 1.38% side branch of the uranium actinium series. Okay, now we have dealt with the spectra, let's go into some general information about francium. This is not francium in water. Francium is not the most reactive metal in the world. No, it does not react more readily than cesium. I cannot experimentally prove it or disprove it myself, but this is how the literature presents this situation. 392.811 kilojoule per mole is higher than 375 kilojoule per mole. Even Wikipedia states this. The source for that is number 14, but I found it unsuitable for the video at the moment. Nonetheless, I've linked it. I will refer to the source 15 instead, which also addresses the energies of francium. Relativistics effect and the chemistry of the heavier main group elements. That sounds promising. Ionization energy 222 is higher for francium than for cesium. All right, let's head to source 222. Ionization potentials of alkali atoms towards the milli electron volt accuracy. Ionization potentials of orbitals in the three shells above the cation closed shell structure are, calcula are calculated. Mm, interesting. And for rubidium, cesium, francium, and element number 119. So, as a note, these are calculations. This is not experimental proof. Francium table, wave number. Realistically, we only concerned about the 7s electron in francium. And this states 32,849. And to close the loop with Wikipedia, let's plug this number into our online unit converter and we get 392 kilojoules per mole. That was mentioned by Wikipedia. Even if you consider the numbers from this study, cesium has a lower first ionization energy. And the first ionization energy is a way more suitable value to describe an element's reactivity than the rough estimate of electronegativity. Moreover, this paper with experiments also describes the ionization potential of 32,814 reciprocal centimeters and that aligns with the 392 kilojoules per mole. Everything is linked, of course. I believe that's enough to clarify the discussion of no, francium is way more reactive because it's below cesium in my periodic table and it states that it has a lower electronegativity and the other part stating cesium is more reactive due to the increasing in relativistic effects. And they are correct. Cesium is indeed more reactive and realistically you can't even manage to get enough francium atoms to drop them into water and see which explosion is bigger, cesium or francium. The record of most cesium atoms trapped in one place 
is just above 300,000 atoms. Enough for an image like this and some basic information about frenzyme chemistry. However, these frenzyme atoms were not separated from the ore, but they were produced by bombarding gold targets with oxygen-18 projectiles. Okay, I've tried my best to make it as interesting as possible, even though I couldn't conduct any experiments, and I'm afraid I might never have access to an accelerator with O18 projectiles and a gold target to create frenzyme atoms for a video. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, goodbye.